After last night's video, I um, sat down and I was reading in the book of Zechariah, and I really felt compelled to come and speak again to my, to my brethren about things that I'm seeing as I read through the scriptures here uh, in the Tanakh. And uh, it's, it's really, I don't even know how to put it, brothers. I, I really don't. This is to my Jewish brethren. And I'd like to say, um, let, let's just go right straight to, to the word of Zechariah the prophet. And chapter 11, verse 6. I'm going to read verse 6 to 13. And I want you to listen to it carefully. Uh, both brothers and sisters as well, um, in Israel and abroad, the Jewish, uh, the Jewish people. It says, For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord, but, I, but lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand, into the hand of the king, and they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. And of course, it's pretty obvious that this is speaking of when our people were scattered in 70 A.D., he says, I will feed the flock of the slaw of, of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Now, interesting, the poor of the nation are going to reap right along with uh, the rest of our people, the, you know, the, the, the better off uh, the Jewish nation. Uh, and keep in mind, another thing that kind of comes to my mind, and I'm, I'm trying to get my people to wake up and to open their eyes as to what's going on. Even when Jesus, when John in the, in the Christian Bible, he said, are you the one or do we seek another one to come? And he said, Jesus told them, uh, go tell him the, 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 blind, the eyes of the blind are open. I'm just paraphrasing from, from, from the Christian Bible. But and the gospel is preached to the poor. So please keep that in mind, brethren, that do not that are not aware of the Christian Bible uh, that is called the New Testament. He says, Their shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Then said I, I will not feed you that dieth, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off, and let the rest eat every one the flesh of one another. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. And I was broken in that day, excuse me, and it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord, or Hashem. This is uh, Yahweh speaking here to our people. And, uh, and by the way, someone did ask me, I'll just real quick answer this question here. Uh, and, and a little question last night was, am I a Messianic uh, Jewish rabbi? No, I'm just a Jewish brother, you know, that believes that Jesus is Mashiach. Uh, I don't claim any particular denomination. And I, let me just say this before I really get in here, because I'm, I'm trying to deal with my own people. Christian people, Christian ministers, be a mainly the ministers I should speak to here, be ashamed of your own selves. Because what happened to our people 2,000 years ago when they rejected Moshiach ben David, being Jesus be to be Moshiach ben David, our people went into captivity as a result of it. And in the days that we're living in now, you have all different types of denominational views and opinions, and so many of them are off the Word of God. And you too have become to a place to where even though you claim that you believe that Jesus is Messiah, you're rejecting Him and your doctrinal views. This is why God will not send any particular church to bring Israel out and to recognize who Moshiach is. It's because of all these different opinions. He must raise up Eliyahu, the Moshe, Elijah, and Moses in order to go and to show our people where we made our mistake. And it will not be any ism or schism or any denominational point that is brought out. Now, I thank God for those of you Christian ministers and and. and believers that have reached out and to win Jews to Christ. I thank God for that. But how many of my own brethren have I seen locked into a doctrinal view instead of getting to the real sacrifice? Moshiach ben David, Yeshua HaMashiach. It's, it's, it's very sad. And you're coming under judgment yourselves for rejecting the Messiah as your own words that are written in the Christian Bible says, you crucify him afresh yourself. 
So, you know, take heed of the hour that you're living in. There is a rapture that is at hand that will, God will take and spare a little remnant of those Christians, but it won't be mass millions disappearing. It'll be a very small number, and then you'll wonder why you're left behind. And then you'll see the same thing that Israel saw when she was left behind. And, and, and all the destruction that happened to our people will also come upon the Christian, especially those that are for dividing our land, etc., what God has promised for us to return. Let's go back again. Then said, I will not feed you that, that dieth. We read this already. Verse 10, And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant with which I had made with all the people. Now this is where God finally, it, it, back before the destruction of the second temple, the covenant has to be broken because Israel has rejected, rejected Messiah. Now, this is where it gets interesting. And it was broken in that day so that the poor of the flock that, that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And this is Hashem speaking. Keep this in mind now. And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear, so that they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Shoshim, 30. Now, the odd thing is, as we know, Jesus, according to the Christian Bible, was sold for 30 pieces of silver as well, just as Joseph was sold out for 20 pieces of silver. In this case here, here this is Hashem speaking. He says, you, 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 you know, what is my worthy of my hire? And they sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Now, he's speaking of the poor. Why? Because Judas was among that group right there that was claiming to believe him. So out of his own group, the, only, the, the very remnant of the Jews that believed him, one sells him out. And, and, and watch what he, this is so fascinating, Zechariah sees this here. Um, and, okay, and he said, he give me the price, and, the, and so they wait for my price, 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was uh, prized at, uh, priced out of them. Now, of course, the potter, that is in the treasury of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the temple at that time. That's what that is. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of Hashem. Oh, my gosh. What happened with Judas when he could not, when he could not bear the fact that he sold out Moshiach? He takes the 30 pieces back and throws it into the temple, recognizing that he had sold innocent blood. And they could not take blood money and put it back into the offering, so they buy the potter's field, as it's called, in order to bury him in. Oh, my God, brothers, how could we have missed this? Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And Hashem said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. And, and I won't go into that right now, but basically, as you get into this part here, it looks to me that, well, let's just read it. It's just two verses here. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal uh, uh, that that is broken. I'm just showing that when Jesus came, he both healed the sick, raised the dead, went to the poor. Now you're going to have some kind of, you're going to have a, a, a a shepherd that's going to come in, a false shepherd that's going to come in. That he is, he's not going to do any of this. He's not going to visit the people. He don't care about the Jews. What is he doing? What does the Vatican do? What do their, their priests, their false prophets do? They stand there with the Palestinians, visit them. No, no, don't get me wrong. I think I'd love to see some Palestinians really get saved as well, but not with some Vatican nonsense or any other nonsense. But if you're going to recognize Christ even for the Arab and the Muslim people recognize who Mashiach is because he come to deliver you as well. He gave the Gentiles a chance and this is your chance before the gospel turns back to our own people. So wake up there, please. Uh, nor feed that that they stand still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. Woe the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock, the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. I just show, remember, the right hand side of a man is always a representation of his strength. As, as they say that Jesus sits at the right hand of God. He's the power, the strength. See, but in this case here, he has no power. He has no strength. 
And his right eye is darkened. Why is his right eye darkened? Because he has no ability to see by revelation the words of Almighty God. So my brethren, take seriously the hour we're living in. It is a late hour. Take it, compare this with the story of, of Yosef, our brother, back in the times when, 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 when Jacob, our father, was in the land and, the, and, and our brother Yosef was sold out and went down into Egypt, was sold as a slave. Our people did not recognize, you know, the, our people were starving in the land and then Yosef was raised up to the right hand of Pharaoh. He fed the people. Now, oddly enough, and I've said this in other videos, he, he comes out. When our brothers come down there, the, the, you know, the, the, the ten brothers come, Benjamin's left back at home because he's a representation of the remnant that will believe Moshiach ben David in this day. He was not guilty of selling them out. Neither are the Jews today guilty of any of the blood of Jesus himself that he died. But like Benjamin, the odd thing is when Benjamin finally does come down, what does Joseph do? He puts his cup in Benjamin's bag. And brothers, we have in our hands we are carrying the very bag or the baggage of the sins and the iniquities of our forefathers and in that bag of iniquity and sins that daniel says it will be forgiven in this last day it's the very cup of yeshua hamashiach we are carrying that cup and the reason it was in benjamin's bag was to show us it was a sign to us that we rejected jesus at the communion table our people, Judas himself, rejected him. Not that we are guilty because we were not there. We were not the ten brothers that sold Joseph out. But nonetheless, we carry, we carry the sins and iniquities of our people. As, as Hashem has said, it's passed from generation to generation. And it's on us. It's this generation that totes that problem. Did not, when they came down the first time, the ten brothers with Joseph, they, they met Joseph, they didn't know who he was. He spoke strangely, he used an interpreter to speak to him. And he places their money back in their bag. Why? As a sign that you sold me out. I brought to you the bread of life. He gives them the grain that feeds Israel. I brought to you the bread of life and you sold me out. I put the money back in your bag. He goes to the hotel on their way back home. And when he does, one of the brothers, he opens up his bag and the money is there. Why? To show us that we, were, that we sold Jesus out the very day that when Jesus was in the womb of his mother and they come down, him and Joseph, to, to the hotel to give a proper birth for his wife, to give birth to Jesus. And he was sold out. It was to show us that that's when we first rejected him, was at the hotel, Bamalon. Oh my God, brother. And then they come back and the second time he puts double the money back into their sack. Why? They were, it was showing that God himself paid for our sins. It's the hour is now and it's upon us even now as we see this two states solution. It's not a solution. But as we see two states coming up and the, and the covenants that are going to be made here any day now, this is the hour. And Hashem will come on the scene and show us who Moshiach really is. Bahu Chabah.